can't see any of you, so keep that in mind when it's time for questions. I'll have uh, Tim help me out with questions. So, uh, good morning. My name is Kathy Lanier, and I am the Chief Security Officer for the National Football League. Our primary goal here today is to inform you and the public uh, what are public safety, all, public safety information around the Super Bowl and those events related to Super Bowl. Our primary objective here is to equip the public with the information that they're going to need to navigate seamlessly through the festivities leading up to the big game and then also to seamlessly move into the stadium on game day. While the Super Bowl has again been designated as a Seer 1 special security rating uh, event, there is no known specific or credible threats to the game or any of the events surrounding Super Bowl. As always, you'll see an increased security presence not only around the stadium on game day, but also around all of our other events. More than 30 federal, state, and local public safety and security agencies have participated in the planning of this event over the last 18 months. While you'll hear from a couple of them today, I want to acknowledge and thank all of them for their exhaustive efforts over the last 18 months working with us. As a part of our security efforts, we also are partnering with DHS, CISA, on the, cyber, the cyber, security and infrastructure, cyber Security and Infrastructure Security Agency on its new cybersecurity awareness program, Secure Our World. Secure Our World encourages individuals, families, and businesses to take simple steps to keep themselves and those they care about and their customers safe online. You'll see us secure our world at the NFL experience and also at the stadium on game day. Before I turn things over to our distinguished speakers, I want to provide you with a few key points for fans who are planning to join us on game day. First and foremost, download the NFL One Pass app. Everything you will need to know, entry times, locations, parking, maps, rideshare, all of that information is in the NFL One Pass app. So download that app to your phone. Please download your mobile ticket. If you have a ticket for the game, download your mobile ticket before you leave to head out to the stadium so that it is downloaded into your wallet. Make sure you head to the stadium with a full cell phone battery. There is no on-site parking at the stadium at all. So please use rideshare or the local Las Vegas Strip for parking. Once you have entered screening, you've passed through screening, and you're headed towards the stadium, please follow the color of your ticket. You must enter the stadium and the door that matches the color that is on your ticket. Please note that access to the stadium campus will be restricted to Super Bowl ticket holders only. So if you do not possess a ticket for the game, we kindly ask that you find alternative viewing arrangements. Like any major city, traffic uh, in Las Vegas on a normal day can be a challenge. There will be road closures in and around the stadium, so traffic will be a little worse than normal. So please plan uh, to depart early and make sure you have time to get to the game on time. The gates will open at 11.30. If you want to sail through a security screening, remember, the NFL has a clear bag policy. Only clear bags, no larger than 12 by 12 by 6, or small clutches that can fit in the palm of your hand are permitted. And lastly, please leave your drones, umbrellas, selfie sticks, and weapons of any kind at home. Super Bowl is a no drone zone. A national security temporary flight restriction will be in place from one hour before to one hour after the game. Drones are prohibited for 30 nautical miles around the Allegiant Stadium. The federal public safety partners, including the FBI, FAA, and Customs and Border Protection will be actively enforcing TFR during the game and both criminal and civil sanctions are possible for TFR violations, so please leave your drone at home. Again, all of this information can be found on the NFL One, uh, One Pass app, so please download that to your phone. So now let me get to introducing our distinguished speakers, and first up, Secretary of Homeland Security, Secretary Mayorkas. Thank you very much, Kathy, and, and good morning. Last week, anyone watching the Ravens Chiefs AFC Championship game would have noticed an unexpected and unexplained administrative timeout about halfway through the first quarter, delaying the game for several minutes. The timeout was called by security officials at MNT Bank Stadium in Baltimore when an unidentified drone flew over the stadium. It does not require much imagination to understand the significant threat such an incident could pose. What happened in Baltimore underscores the vital importance of the mission 385 men and women from the Department of Homeland Security are carrying out here 
in Las Vegas this week. They and all of us in the department, alongside our federal, state, and local partners, are working to ensure that the 65,000 people attending Super Bowl 58 and the millions of people gathering together and enjoying the game across the country are all safe. Our extraordinary workforce is bringing our many resources and skills to bear to do just that. To share a few examples, our Office of Intelligence and Analysis, alongside the FBI, has been assessing the threat landscape leading up to the Super Bowl and sharing timely and actionable information and intelligence with Las Vegas and State of Nevada law enforcement. Our Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA, has conducted vulnerability assessments, multiple planning exercises, and bomb safety workshops with state and local partners. As Chief Lanier announced, the NFL and CISA are also launching a new partnership today to encourage fans, NFL teams, and league personnel to take four simple steps to help keep themselves and their customers safe online as part of our Secure Our World campaign. The impact of this partnership will last long after the game concludes. U.S. Customs and Border Protection, or CBP, is scanning vehicles and cargo entering Allegiant Stadium for weapons, drugs, and other contraband. CBP and the Transportation Security Administration are providing citywide aviation security, video surveillance capabilities, and non-intrusive inspection of vehicles, cargo, and people. Our Counting Weapons of Mass Destruction Office has deployed cutting-edge detection technology to safeguard against the calamity that such weapons can cause. The DHS Blue Campaign, in partnership with Harry Reid International Airport and agents from Immigration and Customs Enforcement, Homeland Security Investigations, and CBP, is helping Las Vegas residents and visitors spot, report, and disrupt human trafficking. We even have officers working with lawful, lo local law enforcement authorities to track the sale of counterfeit goods like fake tickets, T-shirts, and hats. Organizing all these efforts and more is the United States Secret Service under the direction of the Federal Coordinator, Special Agent Karen Ransom, who will, whom we will hear from in a moment. In addition, DHS and Lyft, the ride-sharing company, are launching a new first-of-its-kind partnership today to help detect and prevent human trafficking starting here in Las Vegas during Super Bowl week and eventually expanding across the United States and Canada. Lyft will feature DHS Blue Campaign Human Trafficking Resources in its driver-only in-app learning center and is reaching out to Las Vegas area drivers to ensure that they know these resources are available. This outreach will ultimately help teach one million Lyft drivers key indicators that a rider may be a victim of human trafficking and provide resources to help, including guidance on how to contact the right authorities. I thank Lyft CEO David Risher and his team for partnering with us to help save lives and avert tragedies, especially during the Super Bowl week when this heinous crime can be more prevalent due to the mass influx of travelers. To be clear, to be clear, there are no known, credible, specific threats to the Super Bowl or to Las Vegas at this time, but we are vigilant and we are prepared. Two additional points. First, vigilance, like football, requires teamwork. None of our efforts would be as effective without the seamless collaboration of Chief Lanier and the NFL. Nevada state officials, Las Vegas city officials, local law enforcement, and the Southern Nevada Counterterrorism Fusion Center. I am grateful for their partnership, and I'm incredibly proud of the DHS personnel working alongside them. Just as important as our interagency collaboration is our partnership with the public. My ask of everyone going to the Super Bowl or coming to Las Vegas this week is to remember, if you see something, 
say something. My second point is a reminder to other state and local officials. In advance of pre-planned events where security vulnerabilities are of concern, our department's special event assessment rating, or SEER system, can professionally assess the event and subsequently support state and local officials in filling local capability shortfalls. The Super Bowl is a significant national event that requires extensive federal interagency support, but our expertise and resources are available to any locality, anywhere, whether you are hosting a major championship or a county fair. I strongly urge every community to take advantage of these resources whenever the Department of Homeland Security can be of assistance. Our department is ready and eager to be your partner, especially when such partnership enables our country to gather and celebrate together safely and securely, like so many are doing in Las Vegas this special Super Bowl week. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, next up, we'll have the Special Agent in Charge of the United States Secret Service, Las Vegas Field Office, Karan Ransom. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as noted, uh, my name is Karen Ransom. I'm the Special Agent in Charge of the Secret Service Las Vegas Field Office, and I am the Federal Coordinator for Super Bowl 58. Uh, as a SEER 1 event designated by the Department of Homeland Security, uh, the Secret Service, along with its federal government partners, would assist uh, the City of Las Vegas efforts for Super Bowl 58 security. Securing such a large event uh, is a huge undertaking. It requires the combined expertise and resources of local, state, federal, law enforcement, and public safety entities uh, to ensure a safe and secure event for the fans, the team, event staff, and the public. My role as a federal coordinator is to assist the city of Las Vegas in identifying uh, additional capabilities needed to successfully secure an, an, an event of this magnitude. Uh, once identified, the federal coordinate team then uh, matches those needs to, from resources with the federal government uh, to help meet those needs. Uh, we ensure an appropriate and coordinated federal support for responses for requests from our local, state, and federal partners. There are more than 750 personnel from various federal agencies assisting the city of Las Vegas for Super Bowl 58, uh, both virtually and on site. Everyone has a role to play in making sure that Super Bowl 58 is secure. Uh, so please uh, report any public safety concerns uh, to law enforcement, even suspicious behavior. And as noted, if you see something, uh, say something. In addition to Allegiant Stadium, uh, other NFL-related events are also designated as drone-free zones. Uh, these restrictions will be uh, communicated by the FAA we ask that drone operators uh, please consult with FAA resources for the latest information regarding these restrictions. Securing the Super Bowl is truly, is truly a collaborative effort, and I want to thank all of the contributing federal agencies for their tireless work. Uh, it truly takes a whole-of-government approach to a, secure a, an event of this significance. I've been a special agent in charge of the Secret Service Las Vegas office for the past two years, and I've worked alongside our local partners on various events, including presidential visits, uh, New Year's Eve celebrations, and other major events. Uh, the success of these events speaks volumes to the collaboration and the great working relationship between our state, local, and federal partners. Public safety and security uh, remains my utmost priority as my role as the federal coordinator for Super Bowl 58. In closing, I want, to state, I want to thank the City of Las Vegas, the Las Vegas Police Department, and other local, state, and federal partners, and the NFL for their dedication and commitment in making sure that the Super Bowl 58 remains safe. We appreciate your hard work and continued support as we head into game day. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, next, we'll hear from Spencer Evans, Special Agent in Charge of the FBI Las Vegas Field Office. Morning. 
The FBI is proud to support the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, the NFL, and all of other state, local, and federal agency partners in addressing security needs for Super Bowl 58. We've been preparing for this week for more than a year. We coordinated extensively with our Los Angeles and Phoenix divisions to apply lessons learned from prior Super Bowls, and we're looking forward to passing the torch to New Orleans on Monday morning. The Super Bowl may be an annual event, but every host city and every venue represents both unique challenges and a unique opportunity for the FBI to demonstrate our commitment to protecting the American people and to being the kind of partner the public and our law enforcement colleagues expect us to be. FBI support for Super Bowl 58 largely falls into one of two categories, intelligence and operations. On the intelligence side of things, we have FBI personnel stationed in our own emergency operations center and at every joint command post and intelligence center operating throughout the Las Vegas Valley. These on-premise analysts are backed up by FBI personnel assigned to 24-hour cyber and critical incident watch centers on the East Coast. We are monitoring and sharing every scrap of information that indicates a potential threat with all of our interagency, law enforcement, and appropriate private sector partners. This includes threat intelligence gleaned from social media, from open source materials, our own databases, and our own U.S. intelligence community partners. Operationally, we have highly trained agents and analysts specifically assigned to monitor, detect, and respond to a potential cyber attack from both a criminal threat actor or a hostile nation state. We have special agent bomb technicians and WMD coordinators working with a whole host of partners to keep Super Bowl events free from hazardous devices and substances. We are deploying tactical assets, including multiple SWAT teams, to serve as a force multiplier for the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. We also have dozens of agents assigned to address any tangential criminal or national security threats that may arise from those who would seek to use this week's festivities as cover for illegal activities. Finally, we have specialized personnel assigned to enforce the FAA's temporary flight restriction around Allegiant Stadium and other venues by identifying, tracking, and if necessary, disrupting any unmanned aircraft system, UAS or drone, that should attempt to violate the TFR. As Secretary Mayorkas mentioned in his comments, these critical counter UAS missions have become increasingly relevant when it comes to high profile sporting events, as demonstrated by the FBI investigation and subsequent felony arrest of a drone pilot at the AFC Championship game just last week. While I am proud to speak to the FBI's preparations and capabilities to support Super Bowl 58, our goal for this week is to do our work professionally and behind the scenes so that the focus of the next several days remains squarely on the teams, fans, and visitors, which is where it should be. Las Vegas is a remarkable city, and we are honored to be a part of the team entrusted to keep it safe. Thank you. Thank you, sir, and thank you for your partnership throughout the year. The, the FBI has been a tremendous partner for the, F, uh, for the NFL, and whenever there is threats uh, that we face, whether it's drones or other threats, uh, the, the Bureau has done an amazing job and been a great partner. Uh, last but not least, uh, to our host city, uh, Sheriff Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, Kevin McMahill. Good friend, and what a professional uh, team you have, Sheriff. Well, I have to say we're pretty well prepared just by listening to all that. And good morning. My name is Kevin McMahill. I'm the Sheriff of the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. I'd like to first start by thanking the NFL for hosting this public safety conference, making sure our community knows about how well we are prepared for this. And I think today we have shown that this is a true collaboration between law enforcement agencies at the federal, state, and local level, fire and medical, and we've been working together really since we found out the Super Bowl was coming, planning for this event since it was announced. This is the first time Las Vegas is hosting the Super Bowl, as you all know. Probably not the last after they see how well we do at it. But it's also the first time we've ever had a SEER Level 1 event in our city. But let's just say we are no stranger to hosting large-scale events almost every weekend in our city. Just recently, if you think about all the things that have happened here, we had F1, the attack at UNLV with an active shooter, the New Year's Eve event, and now on to the Super Bowl. I would just say to you that no city is better prepared. My department is prepared to ensure the safety of our visitors and residents alike. But let me be clear, we know we cannot achieve this alone. 
as you know, working together is a key to a safe and secure event. And that includes working with all of these fabulous resort partners and their security staff members. What I want our residents and visitors to know is that I also need your help. As the Secretary mentioned, if you see something, say something. We rely on you, as we do every day of the year, to provide tips to keep our community safe. I promise you, you will never waste our time with any suspicious reporting. Let us do the legwork to determine if the threat is real. On game day, 65,000 plus fans will come together and root for their favorite team. There's also another estimated 330,000 visitors who will come here to be in our town to be part of the Super Bowl fun and the excitement on the Las Vegas Strip. Traffic is going to be bustling on that game day, so plan ahead so you have a smooth experience. Obviously, our goal is to keep everyone safe. At the same time, we'll continue to provide excellent service to our residents in the Las Vegas Valley. We know that we cannot commit all of our resources up here to the Strip and the Super Bowl because we have a duty and a responsibility to the people that live here to keep our community safe. We anticipate a smooth weekend. Just remember, I ask again as the community, if you see something, say something to us. We'll act on it. And the Super Bowl experience, I believe, is going to go down as one of the very best in history. You know, you might have saw that I was checking my phone while we were sitting here talking, and we know that people are going to test us. We know people are going to try things. As we sit here today, there's an individual for a publicity stunt that just tried to start climbing up the top of the sphere. Your first responders are all over there. We're taking care of it. We know these things are going to happen, and we're going to deal with them as they come up and make sure we have the safest Super Bowl we've ever had. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. I will say your team has been an uh, absolute pleasure to work with. The professionalism and the talent that you have on your team is uh, really astounding. Thank you. Okay, uh, we can open up more questions. Tim, yes, you'll have to help. We have time for some questions. There's mics on the sides and in the back. NFL staff has mics. We ask if you're able to please stand, state your name and outlet, and let us know who you're directing the questions to. Let's go ahead and take a couple of questions. Mark? We're back. We're back in here. Mark Maskey from the Washington Post. In terms of your experiences with Super Bowls, what are the unique challenges and issues, if any, that are, are related to having a game here in Las Vegas and a separate issue. Uh, the, the drone issue was mentioned here. That's come up with some degree of regularity now at NFL venues. What more can the NFL do or what more would you like to see done to address that particular issue? Well, thank you for asking that, Mike. You're welcome. Nice to see you from my hometown. Um, every city is different. I think the challenges posed by Las Vegas, obviously, um, you've got a lot of resorts here, a lot of, you, you know, there's a, a large crowd here all the time anyway without the Super Bowl. There's other large events that are going on here all the time. The positive side of that is that the Las Vegas Metro PD deal with these large events, much like Washington DC, all the time. They're very, very skilled at uh, working with the, the private sector partners along the Strip, the hospitality, resorts, casinos. So there's a really strong partnership here uh, amongst the public and the private uh, agencies. So that has made it much, much easier. But this is a complex environment, there's no doubt. It's complex for the sheriff every single day. It's complex for me until we get to the Super Bowl. Uh, but it is a really, I think, the expertise of the agencies that work here and live here and collaborate every single day has made that much, much better. Um, the drone issue. Um, there's a lot we'd like to see uh, done to help improve this drone issue. You know, the, the National Football League and major sports leagues have been uh, partnering with uh, several others to try and push some uh, legislation through so that they can expand uh, counter UAS authorities to state and local law enforcement. You know, we have uh, more than 100,000 requests that go in for SEER ratings for large special events around the country every year, and roughly 25 to 30 of them will get a SEER rating that will authorize, you know, a strong counter UAS uh, mitigation program. So we'd like to see that expanded, that authority expanded, and, and we're working very hard on that. Matt Finn with Fox News. Uh, I respect the collaboration and preparedness that we are discussing here to keep us all safe this weekend. My question is for Mr. Mayorkas. Uh, how do you feel this morning after narrowly avoiding impeachment yesterday? 
Oh, uh, I, uh, I've answered this question before. I'll, I'll gladly answer it again. Uh, the allegations are baseless, and I'm focused on the work, which is what brings me to Las Vegas today. Our Republicans have indicated they may hold another vote, and they might uh, have the numbers at that point to impeach you. Uh, if that happened, would you consider stepping aside? No, I would not. Thank you. Uh, One last question, question for the. No, sir. My question is to Secretary Mayorkas. I'm Lisa Guerrero with Inside Edition. Every single year, the Super Bowl has enormous security. But this year, fans are really excited about Taylor Swift. There has also been some very negative pushback against her uh, visibility at football games. Have you seen any additional threats, any credible threats, that are related to Taylor Swift? Um, uh, we, have, we have not. I would defer also to my partners across the law enforcement spectrum, but I have to say that we uh, are extraordinarily vigilant when we bring 65,000 people together in a stadium, when we have 330,000 people visiting a city for a major sporting event, and when we have millions of people around the world watching it. Our priority is the safety and security of everyone in attendance, and that is what we are focused upon. And when there's an additional celebrity who will bring more attention, we are already at a heightened state of vigilance and fulfilling our responsibility just as we do every single day. Well said, sir. Let's go meet the speakers. Let's meet the speakers. It's uh, Chair uh, McMahill. Uh, with the events of 1 October in mind, are there uh, kind of advanced security measures at hotels as far as baggage checking? Yeah, so we learned a number of lessons, obviously, as you well know, from, from 1 October and, and the loss of 58 lives that particular day and 422 others being shot. And so we have a number of security measures that we implement with our uh, security partners ahead of every event to include this one and New Year's Eve, F1, front-facing rooms, a number of things. But obviously, I'm not going to divulge all the details of those, but absolutely, uh, with our uh, resort, res resort property partners, uh, they're a huge force multiplier for us, but also the plans that we have with the uh, DHS, FBI, as well as our other local partners throughout the city, we're, we're well prepared for it. Thank you. Hi there, Giovanni Carrillo with uh, ABC 13. Uh, this question's for the sheriff. Um, could you elaborate more about the incident that's happening at the sphere? It's my understanding there was a guy that uh, climbed up the sphere. Um, why do you call it a publicity stunt? Because of who, who they told me that they believe it is. Um, they told me that this is supposed to be an individual that is climbing the building for publicity, and um, he is currently on top of the building, and we're working to get him down. Additional questions? In the back, in the back, in the back. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Hi, Ray. Can we get her Hi, my question is for Secretary Mayorkas. Um, I'm Faith Penham with WEBN Boston. Um, this lift, um, this new lift collaboration that the Department of Homeland Security has implemented today, what will training look like for drivers besides offering support through the app interface? So um, uh, the training is to be able to identify when an individual may indeed be a victim of human trafficking. There are certain indicators and we, we train uh, people in, in, in the private sector all of the time. For example, in a hotel, we had a case a number of months ago where a, um, an individual behind the reservation desk had been trained in detecting uh, when an individual could be the victim of a human trafficking event. And in fact, uh, this individual behind the reservation desk saw a young woman in the lobby of the hotel not in Las Vegas, Nevada, knew to call law enforcement because of the behavior which struck her as unusual. And indeed, that young woman in the lobby of that hotel was not only one human trafficking victim there at the hotel, but one of about a dozen. And so what we do is we train drivers in how to detect, how to identify the indicia of a, a human trafficking incident and how to contact responsible law enforcement to address the situation. 
we're incredibly uh, proud of the partnership and very grateful to Lyft for it. Channel 5. Uh, can you hear me okay? Jody Hill with Fox 5 News. Uh, two quick questions. What would happen to someone if they were flying the drone within the restricted area? And as far as the sphere of that goes, the person on top of that, is that a big security deal or is it just somebody doing something dumb that you wouldn't consider a big deal? Thank you. I'll, I'll take a stab at the drone and turn over to you for a sphere. Uh, so uh, the, there, there is a temporary flight restriction that's going to be in place on game day. So if somebody does lift off a drone, there are, we have technical support here so that we are going to be able to detect that drone. Um, the uh, law enforcement agencies here have the ability to, to mitigate that drone. So in other words, to take, that, take control of that drone and take it down. Uh, we typically will immediately identify the operator, and that operator is looking at uh, both uh, federal charges and civil, large civil fines. Am I missing anything from my partners there? Okay. Sphere? So I just add to that what, what Kathy said is that we also have the capability of uh, tracking down the drone operator at the local law enforcement level, and we do that frequently, did it a lot at F1, affected a number of arrests. In regards to the spear, that individual will be arrested when we get him down. It does not seem to be a homeland security issue at this point. However, we treat all of that critical infrastructure, uh, obviously, very importantly, and we'll, we'll do a lot of uh, debriefing as we get through here figure out how he got up there and make sure it doesn't happen on any of our other buildings during this event. Hi, I'm JLB2 with WBN Boston. Um, I just wanted to uh, ask, can you uh, uh, elaborate on the Secure Our World um, campaign and also what that collaboration will look like um, with CISA and, and also like the impact that it will have? So I guess the uh, so secretary talk about the detailed campaign from the NFL uh, side. We're partnering with CISA so that we can help push this campaign. So you will see um, the Secure Our World uh, banners and signs not only uh, throughout the NFL experience that's going on today through uh, Saturday, but you'll also see it at the stadium on game day. So, uh, Thank you, Kathy. So um, uh, this, the cyber threat vector is one that has been growing year over year or for quite a number of years now. And in, the, in an increasingly interconnected world, uh, what we say is we're only as secure as our weakest link. And so um, each individual uh, has the power to secure their own uh, technological environment. And in doing so, we build a stronger and more secure ecosystem. And sometimes it takes very simple steps. Um, pick a secure password. Change your password. Uh, with some regularity. Use multi-factor authentication. Be careful uh, not to click on links that one does not recognize. Spear phishing is a very, very common way of intruding into a system without uh, permission. So we give basic tips to each individual and to businesses alike as to what they can do and thereby build a more secure ecosystem in the cyber environment. Thanks, sir. said you focused on the work. Uh, do you want to comment about the Senate inability to advance the border security bill? Um, you know, I was very uh, privileged to provide technical and operational expertise to the bipartisan group of senators uh, that presented a piece of legislation that would uh, provide the Department of Homeland Security and other federal departments involved in the immigration system with much needed resources and to fix in part what everyone agrees is a broken immigration system. Not only to provide us with much needed resources, but also enforcement tools to help secure the border. We need Congress to act, and we are hopeful that Congress will do so. All right, thank you very much. We appreciate you coming out today, and that'll conclude our news conference. Thank you.